Hi friends! Welcome to Storytime with the Met. My name is Emily and I'm so glad that you've joined me today. We're going to be reading a story, taking a look at a work of art, and making a quick craft that you can do at home. So, let's get started. Find a cozy spot. Are you ready? Great! We're going to begin with our story time song, just like we do when we're together at the museum. It goes to the tune of This Old Man. Sing and clap together with me on the count of three. Ready? One, two, three. Welcome friends, get ready, get set for story time with the map where we love to read. Sing and look at works of art and picture books. We'll use our eyes to look and see. We'll use our ears to hear stories. Now let's take a seat and give a Let's begin with our first book. Great job! Our book today is The Curious Garden by Peter Brown. I'm going to read the words and let's look at the pictures together. The Curious Garden There once was a city without gardens or trees or greenery of any kind. Most people spent their time indoors. As you can imagine, it was a very dreary place. What colors are this city? However, there was one little boy who loved being outside. Even on drizzly days, while everyone else stayed inside, you could always find Liam happily splashing through his neighborhood. It was on one such morning that Liam made several surprising discoveries. He was wandering around the old railway as he did from time to time when he stumbled upon a dark stairwell leading up to the tracks. The railway had stopped working ages ago, and since Liam had always wanted to explore the tracks, there was only one thing for the curious boy to do. Liam ran up the stairs, pushed open the door, and stepped out onto the railway. The first thing he saw was a lonely patch of color. Wild flowers and plants were the last thing he expected to find up there. But when he took a closer look, it became clear that the plants were dying. They needed a gardener. Liam may not have been a gardener. But he knew he could help, so he returned to the railway the very next day and got to work. The flowers nearly drowned and he had a few pruning problems, but the plants patiently waited while Liam found better ways of gardening. As the weeks rolled by, Liam began to feel like a real gardener, and the plants began to feel like a real garden. Most gardens stay in one place, but this was no ordinary garden. With miles of open railway ahead of it, the garden was growing restless. It wanted to explore. The tough little weeds and mosses were the first to move. They popped up farther and farther down the tracks and were closely followed by the more delicate plants. Over the next few months, Liam and the Curious Garden explored every corner of the railway. Here he is in the middle of his new garden. And let's look at the other side. Here he is. What do you see in the background? After spending his spring and summer and autumn with the garden, Liam's time on the railway was finally interrupted by winter. Heavy blankets of snow fell on the city that season, and for the first time since he'd become a gardener, Liam could not visit the plants. Look at it buried underneath all that snow. 
Rather than waste his winter worrying about the garden, Liam spent it preparing for spring. After three cold months, the snow finally began to melt. Liam rolled his new gardening gear over to the railway. Winter had taken a toll on the garden, but thanks to Liam's planning, his handy new tools, and a little help from the sun, the plants soon awoke from their winter sleep. The garden had always wanted to explore the rest of the city, and that spring it was finally ready to make its move. Once again, the tough little weeds and mosses set out first, they popped up farther and farther from the railway and were closely followed by the more delicate plants. The garden was especially curious about old, forgotten things. A few plants popped up where they didn't belong, and others mysteriously popped up all at once. Where do you see the plants growing? I see one on a stop sign. But the most surprising thing that popped up were all the new gardeners. Look at them at the bottom. And here they are, enjoying time outside and in nature. Many years later, the entire city had blossomed. But of all the new gardens, Liam's favorite was where it all began. And let's take one last look. Look at that city, how it's changed. Good reading, friends. Thank you. This book reminds me of a painting at the Met by George Seurat called The Gardener. Take a look at this painting. What do you see? I see a gardener in the middle of the painting. What do you think he's doing? Taking care of his plants? Now let's see. Can you take your whole body or maybe just your arms and bend over like that gardener? Can you do it? Great, now pop up like some plants blossoming. Nice job, friends. How do you help nature? Talk about that with your family. How do you help nature thrive in some plants like Liam and the gardener in George Seurat's painting? Well, we are going to do one last craft together. I'll give you some instructions for something you can do at home to make a little plant, some plants thrive inside your house. Are you ready? We are going to make coffee filter flowers, and I've got some here. I'll show you the supplies. I've got some supplies here, but you can use some different ones at home. So, you're going to need coffee filter. If you don't have coffee filters at home, you can use paper towels. You need food coloring. If you don't have food coloring, you can also use a marker and color on your coffee filter. I need a medicine dropper to drop my food coloring dye onto the flowers. And if you'd like to make stems for your flowers, you can use pipe cleaners. So what I'm going to do to start is take my coffee filter and fold it. And I can fold it a few times so it turns into a triangle shape. And then I can take scissors and cut if I want to make the shape of the petals. And when I open it up, I'm going to have flower petal shapes. Now, here's how you make it colorful. With your food coloring, you just want to take a few drops and put it in a little bowl of water. The more food coloring you use, the brighter your flower is going to be. You can take your dropper, draw up some of that dye that you made, and you can drop it onto your flower. Now, when they're all dry, you can take more than one at a time. When they're 
are all dry, you just pinch it in the middle, twist, and it turns into a flower. And I can spread my flower petals out. So I hope you make some flowers to cheer you all up while we're all inside. And we hope to see you again for story time soon. Bye.